If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have Matt Bissett back on the show. He returns to action in a little over two weeks' time. January 24th in familiar territory, the main event for the CES featherweight title. He's going to take on Charles Cheeks III in the main event of CES 60 in Lincoln, Rhode Island, live on UFC Fight Pass. Happy to have the Mangler back on the show. Mangler Mania running wild on YouTube right now. How are you, Matt? I'm good, man. You see those shirts? I did. I did. Fire, right? They're Fire. awesome. I was going to guess that the theme for your shirt was going to be pro wrestling related in some way, but you brought up good. the the icon himself and that's perfect why the hulkster why not <laughs> <laughs> well it's great to have you here and great to see you getting back in the cage for the first time since you and your wife welcomed a brand new baby into the world in 2019 you mentioned it you don't want to be too lax you don't want to wake her up how is life with uh with the baby in the house it's different very very different <laughs> um there's like uh my schedule is like all over the place uh, from week day to day, week to week. It's different. Right? It's, it's really hard to schedule anything. Um, and people are like, Hey, what's your schedule? Can, are you going to be around this day? And I'm like, no fucking idea, dude. <laughs> I have no idea. My schedule for work is uh, ready for this. It's seven days on three days off, two days on two days off, seven days on four days off, two days on one day off, seven days on five days off. Five days on, three days off, five days on, three days off. And then it rotates. And it's all second shift, and I could be uh, mandated to work third shift uh, pretty much whenever they they need me. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's tough. Sometimes I don't know my schedule at all until that night. Excuse my ignorance, but outside of fighting, what, what else are you doing? For, and the, the fact you remembered that entire schedule is phenomenal. Well, it's, it's easy when you think about it every day. <laughs> um, I'm a correction officer. Oh, cool. How long have you been doing that for? Yeah. Uh, since May. Nice. You enjoying it? I am, actually. I am. I think uh, uh, there's a lot of like uh, negativity attached to the job. Um, and a lot of people are like, I'd never want to be a correction officer because inmates suck and this and that. I'm like... For the for you know some of the inmates do suck. Some of them are just you know fuck ups and they're just trying to do their time and leave. Um, but I I feel like if um, if you're a positive person and you go in there happy and you just keep that positive mindset, like no matter what happens that day, it's just like any other job. You could take the negativity back home or you could leave it at work. You know, um, and if you're a positive person, you'll find a you'll find a way to be positive during every situation. I, I use a lot of uh, humor to keep me positive. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of situations where I can be like, what the fuck? But I just go, all right, whatever. <laughs> and I laugh it off, you know? Do any of the inmates know who you are? Yeah, yeah. Some of them, uh, some of them did beforehand. They were calling me Maddie, or they call me Mangler. I'm like, dude, don't call me that. <laughs> I'm like, in here, you got to call me Bissette. And they're like, okay, yes, sir. And I'm like, all right. <laughs> Um, you know, and then, uh, some of them have like, it, it took like, honestly, two days before half the facility knew that I fought, um, and another couple of weeks until they knew who I was. And it was like, there was nothing I could do. Literally nothing. I didn't tell anybody. Um, and it was just like word of mouth. It's like a high school dude. Like one person knows now 10 people know now 50 people, a hundred people, the whole school knows. Um, so can't hide it, so I just kind of embrace the idea that these guys know who I am, and I just kind of go with the flow. There you go. And in terms of your fighting career, you made your return to CES about 10 or so months ago. You took on Tim Dooling. You got the win via unanimous decision. Your first time fighting for CES since May of 2017. You got to do it in Connecticut this time around. I know you fought at Mohegan before, but it, this is a little bit different being off the reservation. After your run you know, with the UFC, was it good to be home? Did it feel right being back in the CES cage? Yeah, yeah, you know, I was I was really pumped, and the fact that it was in Connecticut, and you're right, you, you said it, uh, you said it perfectly. It's it was very different than fighting Mohegan. You know, Mohegan's still an hour away from my house. You know, people still got to take a trip to go out there. Um, it's a, uh, it's not like it's five minutes from the gym. 
you know, it's, it was, it's five minutes from underdog, like 25 minutes. If that from, uh, Ascension, it's, it's close, you know? So I had, I slept at home that the night before I did everything at my house, woke up and just left the house. Like I was going to training and, you know, it was, it was almost not like, it was only, it was almost like, uh, every other day of just waking up, getting myself together and going to fight. And now you get the chance to reclaim the CES 145 pound title title. You never really lost because you went out of the contender series and then went on to the UFC. Bruce Boyington was the champion for, for quite some time. And I know you guys sort of went back and forth on social media because you know, you wanted to fight him. It made a lot of sense. Now he's going to fight Josh Grisby of all people in NEF in February. I know, I, I know Bruce had some issues with CES and rightfully so I understand where he's coming from, but was that fight with Bruce ever discussed or offered from your perspective? I said, I mean, I, I, I showed him text messages and I posted them uh, online and stuff. And I don't remember the date without looking, but it was months ago. It was literally, I think I talked about wanting to fight the winner uh, before Dan DeBuke and uh, Bruce fought, like, I don't know, days, weeks before that fight. And then when uh, Bruce won, I said, give me Boyington. Um after I'm off of uh, working probation with the Department of Corrections, and uh, which is actually January 18th, and I'm fighting January 24th, so, um, so I said I, you know, I can't do it until then because I can't commit to a schedule and I can't get days off. Uh, when you're on probation, there's no such thing as calling out. You can't do it. Um, so, I, I said that, and uh, it, I mean. That was the talk of it, and he said, uh, Pat said that he's been trying to reach out to Bruce. He's talked to Bruce about that fight, um, said that he's trying to match it up, and Bruce kind of played dumb. In my opinion, he played dumb. I think he was trying to sidestep the, the real fight, and uh, he wanted a an easier fight, but at the same time, Grisby's not an easy fight. He's a murderer. He's a killer. He's he's very good, you know, and uh, by the way, the way that he um, brought up Bruce's um, pass, I guess, uh, with his girl. I think that was fucking bullshit. I think that uh, he did his time with the state, and you know, and everybody makes mistakes. Obviously, uh, you know, his uh, his persona is, is tarnished by that. But at the same time, that's not his place to be able to say and do those things, especially in front of all those people. Yeah, I, under, I understand where you're coming from in that aspect. I mean, we're seeing it with, in the UFC with Greg Hardy. That seems to be the, the big topic of conversation there. Um, it's just something you're going to have to to live with and deal with throughout your career, through through good and good times and in bad. It's just it's just the way that it is. And you know, some yeah. some fighters believe that it should be left in that aspect. But I understand where you're coming from. Originally, I saw you were supposed to fight Luis Luna on this card, and then a couple of days later, it became Charles Cheeks the third. I mean, it wouldn't be a map to set fight without at least one opponent change. Luckily, this one didn't happen two days before the fight, but was Luna ever the guy? Yeah. And if so, what happened with that? Uh, yeah, he was the guy, um, and I think uh, he verbally agreed to, to us fighting. Their contract was out there for him, but he never signed it. Um, and I think that he took a, a fight for Combate Americas instead, um, and, because there was a better payday or better opportunity or something like that for him. The, the, what he said was the better opportunity at this point. Um, so he took that fight and he got knocked out in the first round or something like that. So sucks for him. He still would have <laughs> got knocked out in the first round, but just would have been for a title. So now you get Charles Sheeks the third, and you know I've talked to you so many times at this point. I know the opponent doesn't matter to you all that much, but you know at least on paper he's a veteran. He's got a lot of fights for LFA. He's a Texas guy. You guys do have a common opponent in Ray Trujillo. Uh, while the opponent doesn't matter all that much, you you still bring a student of the game mentality to the fight game. So from a stylistic perspective, how do you like this fight? I like every fight, unless the guy is like a super high level wrestler with. Uh that kind of like pressuring doesn't give you space um, kind of fighter, like no space to fight. Like Scott Cleve was like that. Um, and um, Daniel Vichel are like that. They don't, they don't want to fight. They just want to like hold you down and prevent a fight from happening. I hate that shit. And uh, what's his name? Enrique Barzola was like that. It's like, what the fuck dude? Do you want to fight or do you want to fuck? What, what's happening? Um, so, 
you know, I like to put on a show. I like to get in a scrap. I like blood exchange. You can have some of mine. I'll have some of yours. It's like, you know, it's part of the battle. Uh, you know, if you're just trying to hold on to get a, a decision in the judge's eyes, then I think it's bullshit. But, but they're controlling, and I get it. Um, those aren't guys I like to fight. I'll fight them. I have many times. Um, but more often than not, I like the guys that like to exchange a little bit, grapple a little bit, go for subs a little bit, you know, just do everything. And I think that Charles tends to try to do everything, although I think he's a little bit more of a uh, come forward and, and, and uh, takedown kind of guy. And he's not any kind of like, – he's not a Scott Cleave wrestler. He doesn't have the grappling ability of Vitral. He doesn't have the wrestling – and grappling and strength of uh, Enrique Brazola, you know. So um, I think this is a really good fight for me, and I think that he's going to fall into my game plan as soon as I start sucking takedowns and making him pay from every position. I was out in Boston covering the the UFC event that just happened at the Garden uh, back in October, and I was talking to a bunch of media members, some of which were from New England, some are very familiar with you, and I. And while we were at the bar, I said, Mapaset's like the Uriah Faber of New England MMA. And the main reason I say that is because you're very unselfish. You're always putting your guys over and your girls over who train with you from your gyms. Johnny Lopez is one of those guys you've mentioned quite a bit through our conversations, and he's going to be fighting in the co-main event for the vacant flyway title. This is pretty cool stuff, right? I mean, pairing up with a teammate and one of the nicest guys in the sport to boot. He's, you know, you're his mentor. He said that many, many times. How cool is that for you? Um, it's it's awesome, awesome, awesome fighting with Johnny. Uh, Johnny's become a, a really good friend of mine. Um, and uh, he went to my wedding. I went to his wedding. He's just a good, good fucking dude. Um, and if he had no shirt, he'd find a shirt and then give it to you. You know, he's that kind of guy. Um, so it's it's an honor to fight with Johnny on the card, and uh, I I don't like the mentor thing, you know. I don't like the coach thing. I'm not his coach. Uh, he might say it, but I'm not. I'm just his friend, and I like helping him out, you know. Um, he's obviously got a ton of talent, and uh, he's got he's hungry as hell, like all the time, uh, and he's always ready for for knowledge, and he's a happy, positive guy. How can you not want to be around a guy like that? So um, I like helping Johnny, and. More than anything, this is an honor to me to fight on the same card as Johnny Lopez fighting for the first flyweight title and Gregor Bello fighting for the heavyweight title. So, uh, so it's his last fight. That'd be that's gonna be dope, dude. I did ask Johnny about this. I don't know if you watched the interview or not, but I feel like he's being overlooked when talking about up and coming guys in New England. I know he's been at this for a while. You know, he's in his 30s, so he's not like a 22 year old kid coming up. But the guy's on such a streak right now. He's won so many fights. I think he's like 12 out of 13 or 11 out of 12. The guy's just killing it right now. But when you talk to like New England fans and they talk about guys that are just on these runs, I feel like Johnny's name isn't being brought up enough. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> I watched that video. Oh my god, Johnny's so nice. He's like so <laughs> soft spoken. Everything's so like happy, happy. So I'm listening to that, and you're, and he's, oh my god, Johnny, <laughs> 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 fucking dying. You know what I'm talking about. He's just yeah. a nice dude. Uh, the reason why he's not talked about is because he's so fucking nice, and nobody thinks about the nice guy. You know, nobody thinks about him. And the way Johnny fights is like he goes for, he goes for like aggressive hard submissions he takes you down and he goes for hard, aggressive hard submissions he comes forward with strikes he's got i mean i've seen him in, in the gym knock dudes out uh you know so it's like you know hope, hopefully that never happens not not gonna be on the gym but like at times it does happen mistakenly mistakenly or whatever but um you know he's got power he's got that uh he just his thing is to be aggressive and go for subs rip an arm leg neck whatever and you know it's not as like it's not there's not blood everywhere. Johnny's not like let's fucking go. I'll kill these motherfuckers. He's not going crazy. He's not like rallying up the crowd or anything like that. So um, it's just Johnny. Johnny's a quiet dude. He just likes to like to compete and and then go after after that, have a drink and just be happy. You know. <laughs> so it's it's hard to get behind if you're if you're an especially in America if you're an MMA fan you're looking at like the bad guy, the big mean guy, the super like kill guy, uh, the guy that dominates everybody, uh, that, that good guy, bad guy, whatever. But like somebody that really, really stands out and the giant doesn't stand out enough. And I think, um, I think that has hurt him, uh, as far as getting the next 
biggest fight, but uh, dude's got a world title fight on his doorstep, so we got it. We're there, <laughs> you know. Now it's about uh, getting this W and then figuring out the the next big step for him. I'm I'm curious because you you've been in this game for a while now. You've seen a lot of this point. You've been a part of so many different things. Will you be able to watch Johnny's fight? and sort of take in what you can while you're getting loose and, and, and getting ready for your fight? Or are you going to have to sort of separate yourself from that altogether? How are you going to approach that part of the night? I'll watch it. You know, I'll, I'll be continuing to warm up, continuing to move and stuff like that. Um, I, I think that what they're going to do for the, the order of the fights is have it go Johnny, Greg, and then me. So I'll be warming up lightly. You know, most of my warm-up is going to be Right after uh, Johnny's fight and during Greg's fight, you know. So I'll be doing like a little light warm up during Johnny's fight here and there, uh, warm up my own way, and then um, I'll watch it. I'm not gonna be out, not like I'm sitting down watching the whole thing, you know. Right. I'll be watching the training, watching the training, watching the training. What's the the goal for you on January 24th? Like obviously getting the win, getting your belt back. That's what it's all about. But in terms of you know, what you want to show as a martial artist, as a fighter in 2020, what do you hope to accomplish when you headline CES 60 against Charles Cheeks III from a, from a martial artist perspective? You remember the Kevin Kroom fight? Yes. You remember how dominant that was? I do. I want it twice as dominant. I want blood. I want him giving up. I want a hard sub, a hard knockout, something that like makes you go, holy shit, you know. Um, Militic was like, wow, after I beat Kroom. I want that. That's all. I won't settle for anything less. Are you hoping for another iconic photo? Because I feel like every time you're, you're booked to fight for CES, it's that picture of you looking absolutely <laughs> crazy with the blood all over you. Are you, I mean, th- that photo is like <laughs> I- in the New England annals forever. Is that crazy to you? That's a good fucking photo, dude. <laughs> Both those photos, the one from my last fight and then the one where uh, I beat Ping, I got the title the first time. Um, those two photos are, are great. One where I'm on top of the cage, like, with my tongue out, and the other one where I'm, like, yelling in into the camera. Um, Will gets it done. He's a fucking great photographer, dude. And he always seems to catch the best shots. Yeah, that picture is <clears throat> absolutely ridiculous. It's unbelievable. Um, I, I, I want to ask you about something that I heard, and maybe you can clarify this for me. I was told that last year you were offered a fight on the contender series. Is there any truth to that? No. Okay. That's why I asked these questions because, yeah. yeah who said that? Uh, I heard it from, from a couple different people. I can't remember off the top of my head, but someone had told me that, that you were offered a contender series fight. For some reason you couldn't do it. I don't know if it's because of the new job or whatnot, but, but that's what I had heard. And that's why I'm asking you. Oh, that'd be nice. <laughs> I don't know when. When did they? Um, when did like what date was this? That I was offered it. It probably would have been toward. Yeah, it probably would have been towards like the end of the season. From from what I understood, I didn't know a date or opponent or anything like that. I just heard. Yeah, I heard Bissett. You know, I was told Bissett got offered a a contender series fight and he couldn't take it for some reason. He couldn't take it. So that's why I wanted to address it with you before. Yeah, just, just I don't just curious think about so. It. It might have come up in conversation. I don't. I don't think so. Though I don't want to be a, a liar. If I maybe I did. I don't know. It. You know. Uh, I know. I told uh, my manager, Palmquist, Chris Palmquist, that um, uh, during X amount of time I can't fight just because I don't know my schedule. I want to be working sixteen-hour days. I got a new baby. Um, so maybe he just said. Uh, maybe he answered for me. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, there's obviously a lot going on in your life these days, as, as you just stated. I, I wonder mean, who it was against. Me too. <laughs> you find out who it was against. <laughs> me too. I, I don't know if I'm opening up a Pandora's box here or what, but um, that's just, <laughs> I just wanted to, to get your take on that. I mean, like you said, I mean, you're, you're, you're the, the coaching, you're parenting, you got a baby in the house, you're fighting, you, you got this, this new job, you're, you know, there's a lot on your plate these days. So when it comes to Matt Bissett, the fighter, you know, what are some of the goals you've set for yourself for the years? Like, you know, try to get X number of fights in here. Like, what kinds of goals do you do you want to accomplish this year? Um, try to figure out the best way to say this. Um, for this year, um, I want to just make sure that. <laughs> 
I'm gonna I'm gonna fight this year. I don't wanna I don't wanna say anything too too much, but I'm gonna fight this year. I'm gonna fight hopefully hopefully a few more times this year, and then uh, we'll see. Right. I don't know what's next. I don't know what's next. I can't give you the the best answer. I can give you a answer, but I don't want to give you the wrong answer. You'll understand what that means someday. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I feel like Robert De Niro's kid in a Bronx Tale right now. You'll understand when you're older. You'll understand when you're older. That's a great movie. I know That's it is. a great movie. Fantastic. Well, I'm I'm excited to see you back there January 24th. Main event of CES 60, taking on Charles Cheeks the third CES featherweight title, your featherweight title, title you never lost, up for grabs. It's always a pleasure to talk with you, Matt. Before we let you go, uh, let the folks know where they can find and follow you in the web, social media, any shoutouts, and more importantly, where can everybody get the Mangler Mania t-shirts? Yeah, um, I have a, if you go to, uh, I think it's uh, Mangler underscore MMA. Mm-hmm. Uh, also my Twitter, but nobody really follows me on Twitter. Which is shit about Twitter. Um, uh, Instagram uh, has got that, that URL in my profile. So if you click that link, you can check it out. Um, let me know what you think. Order a shirt, do what you gotta do. Uh, on the back of the shirts, I got you know I got my sponsors, um, and I got the a sexy little quote for you. It's a yoga quote. Uh, you can go check that out. My sponsors on the back of the shirt are uh, Soldier Solutions, Cryo Wave, uh, My Gym Ascension, uh, Doc Plus, Timeless, Lucas Watson, Firm, Pure Alchemy, and Meineke of There you go. Very cool. Love the shirt. Hope you sell out of them, Matt. Thank you for the time and all the best to you on January 24th, man. Thank you, Mike. Good talking to you, Bill.